Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday Worship. I'm glad you're here to worship with us. Let me open up today's service with a reading from Psalm 63, verse 1 through 5. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for gathering us all here today and staying with us. We thank you for protecting us and keeping us healthy during these confusing and scary times. We ask you to stay with us and continue to protect us. We ask you for your wisdom and strength to make it through the pandemic. We ask you to show the world that we need you and you are our only hope. We ask you to protect the doctors and nurses that risk their lives every day going to work to save the people that are sick or hurt. We also ask you to give wisdom to our leaders of our world. Let them turn to you and understand you, you are the one and only God. We ask that you will stop all the violence and fighting in this world. We ask you to love one another, love our families, our friends, and even our enemies. Let us all put our trust in you. Let us have no fear when you are with us. Let us not give up and lose hope in you. Instead, let us work harder for you, strengthen our faith during this quarantine. You are, you are the love and patience we need, so let us work for it and become closer to you now. We know you will be coming back soon, so let us be prepared and ready. We thank you and we love you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Proverbs 21, 25 to 26. The craving of a sluggard will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. All day long he craves for more, but the righteous give without sparing. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I don't know if you guys have been reading along um, through the Proverbs with us each week, but I really encourage you to read at least um, one chapter of Proverbs a week. Like this week, read chapter 21. There's so many nuggets of truth in there that will only benefit you. Um, and if you've been reading along, you'll have noticed a lot of repetition on Solomon's part. Again, think about it. He's teaching his sons, right? And in teaching, there is a lot of repetition because we forget. Even if we know, we forget. And we definitely don't practice it, even if we know. Um, so some major themes that we will constantly see in Proverbs are things like fear the Lord, seek wisdom, be honest, be humble. But one of the most redundant uh, Proverbs you will read about is this theme of working hard. Um, and I think it mentions folly, I want to say in like a, a good three-fourths of the chapters in Proverbs. It, it talks about the folly of sloths and the folly of laziness. Okay, so is it a widespread problem? Yes, he talks about it so much, so it must be a huge issue. Um, is it something that we should address? Absolutely. Um, my dear old favorite author, uh, C.S. Lewis, he said, laziness just means more work in the long run. Right now, it seems okay, seems to be chill, satisfying, content, but in the long run, you're going to have to work so much harder than you did if you had just steadily done what you were supposed to do. Think about it. Some of you guys are in school right now. You know what I'm talking about. You are experts at procrastination. That's not something to brag about, okay? <laughs> um, when you don't take time to learn the concepts or learn how to solve, um, let's say, certain math problems uh, or study the material when it's given to you and really understanding the theories, really understanding the concepts behind it, um, by the time midterms or tests come up, you find yourself scrambling, you know, pulling all-nighters, stressing out, like cramming and studying and trying to figure things out. And it's so much more work for you than for the student who has been 
studying and working hard all semester, every week, every day, trying to trying to figure out how to do this stuff. Um, laziness just means more work in the long run. And I'm a little embarrassed to admit this myself, but sometimes I don't do the dishes for like two, two days because I feel like I need rest. Okay, I'm the only one who does dishes in my house, but sometimes I'm like, dude, I just need rest from that. I don't want to deal with that right now. Um, but if I'm really honest, it's because I'm being lazy. Okay, I'd rather bum around. I'd rather watch TV. I'd rather scroll on my phone than do the dishes. So sometimes we run out of plates. Sometimes we'll run out of spoons <laughs> or we'll run out of utensils or pots or pans. And, and it's only then I will go and, and start washing and doing the dishes. But it takes three times longer for me to, to finish it. Um, had a, it, you know, I should have just done, cleaned it after every meal. Um, again, laziness makes more work in the long run. And you see, the thing with laziness is, is that sometimes, like myself, I sometimes mix it up with rest. Rest, R-E-S-T. And it's not the same thing. Rest is not laziness and laziness is not rest. So let's get that strained out real quick. We absolutely need rest. Okay, God knows that. He doesn't want us to be workaholics. We're not meant to be workaholics. God gave us a day to rest. He he rested himself. God of all people rested. It's something that God has commanded us to do really is to take care of yourself, right? But the reason why we rest is different than maybe the world would believe or practices. The reason we rest, the purpose God calls us to rest is actually to do work. God calls us to rest so that we will go out and do work again, to work hard, to do good, good deeds. Uh, so Solomon describes a lazy person as someone who takes extra sleep. So it's not just about resting. They take, they go a little overboard. Yes, we need rest. God knows that. God commanded it. But Solomon's like, yeah, but there's, there's, sloths out there. There are lazy people out there that take it a step further. So they take extra sleep. They refuse to work even when they are able to, and they call it rest. Solomon says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber. Poverty will come upon you like a robber. In today's scripture reading, Solomon said the craving of, a, of a, a sluggard will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. Do you know people who are like that? Who will just not work? They're fully capable of working, but they will not do it. I call them lazy bums. Brothers and sisters, ain't nothing good come from being lazy. Okay? Laziness reaps nothing in your life. That's why we call lazy people lazy bums because that is what they become. Okay, and I know none of you guys, ha you know, grow up thinking, man, I want to find a job where I don't have to do anything. Okay, actually we do say that. But <laughs> we, we, no, we don't say I want to grow up and be poor. I want to grow up and live in poverty. No one does that. It's ridiculous to, to think that way. But the irony of laziness is that you think you're giving yourself a break, right? You think you're giving yourself a nice little treat. Um, it's satisfying not to work, right? No, we all want a break. We all want to be lazy around and, and take, you know, all these uh, months longs of break. That would be wonderful, but it's not practical. Um, because in the end, if you continue in that laziness, it sneaks up on you, brothers and sisters. Yeah, again, like I said, nobody grows up saying, I want to live in poverty. I want to be a bum. Nobody says that, but it sneaks up on you and it leads you, this is the irony, to dissatisfaction and discontentment. You thought being lazy would be like, oh yeah, this is awesome, peace, rest, um, I'm vacationing, whatever. No, it's not like that. In the end, you're dissatisfied. You are discontent. You have nothing. 
and the deception of laziness is that we think we can just show up and reap a harvest. We think when we put nothing in, somehow magically something will appear. The sluggard still craves all the luxuries that hardworking people earn, hardworking people get. The sluggard craves all that same stuff, but they never get it. They never get their hands on it. Solomon said, sluggards do not plow in season. So at harvest time, they look, they go and look, but find nothing. There's nothing for you, brothers and sisters, if you don't put anything in. We can translate that to our spiritual lives as well. Okay, come on now. Let's be real. Sometimes we invest nothing or very little, the bare minimum, into our spiritual lives. And somehow we expect a lot. It's that subtle mentality that we have that we believe that, you know, Sometimes even in a church, you know, we give nothing. And I'm not just talking about financially or offering. We may give nothing. We don't contribute in any way to, to sharing or helping um, with the responsibility of carrying out the mission of the church. We, we just come and we just receive and consume. And we think that's okay. And we get disappointed when we don't get when we don't receive God's blessing, when we don't receive attention, when we don't receive acknowledgement or something, we get disappointed. Solomon calls that kind of thinking foolish. Paul told Titus in the New Testament, you know, at one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We too were foolish one time. Remember? We used to be like that. We used to think like that. We used to act like that. We used to be lazy like that. We used to chase self-satisfaction like that. But now that Christ lives in us, we're different. We're changed. We've been transformed. That's not our way of thinking anymore. That was our fleshy thinking. Now we are of the Spirit. He wrote to the Thessalonian church, even when we were with you, we would give you this command. This is what we would say to you. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. And, and he also warned them, keep away from every brother who is idle. They've been there. They know the temptation and the lure of, of laziness and idleness. It is good. Why not sleep all day long? Hey, come on now. I'd rather be in a bed and roll around then be working out on my lawn or working out, you know, in a in teaching or something. What are you going to choose? Paul says, you have to work hard. This is the way of the Lord. Um, it's kind of, uh, you know, Paul and as he's talking to Titus and talking to the Thessalonian church, he's reminding them, you know, we have to die to ourselves. We have to die to our wants um, and take up the cross and follow Jesus. Okay. We have to die to our fleshly uh, lusts, fleshly desires. Because if we don't, it's going to continually lead us to inaction, idleness. It's kind of like that song lyric. Uh, everyone wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Few, few, and Jesus even says this, few will die to themselves. Few will spend their energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give. We would rather enter into the, the, the wide gate and walk on the, the broad and wide road. We would rather get drunk and sleep with the rest of the world than to die to ourselves. Charles Spurgeon, great um, preacher and theologian, said that is what Satan does. He will take care to sing your lullaby and rock your cradle if you want to sleep. For he hates to see God's warriors on the alert. That's the point of Solomon's redundancy in, in calling out the folly of laziness over and over again in the book of Proverbs. Laziness 
Listen here. Laziness hardens our conscience. Laziness hardens our conscience. It abandons um, a- any sense of priorities, right? And and again, Satan's a deceiver, right? So we get deceived into thinking and justifying, no, our laziness is okay because we think we're busy. And brothers and sisters, just because you are busy does not mean you are hardworking. You could be busy doing the wrong thing. That means you are lazy in the right things. Hardening of our hearts. Hardening of our conscience. We don't even realize that that's what is happening. We need God to heal our fleshy part of our hearts, brothers and sisters, because we still crave all the things that war against the Lord. Paul continues to tell Titus that this is kind of the solution. This is how we battle our laziness. He said, Christ gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own. Why? Eager to do what is good. Paul told Titus, Christ gave himself to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Jesus can redeem our time. Jesus can redeem our lives once we start trusting and obeying him. Our faith and our conduct really have to match. And I pray that we would be zealous to do good works too. Because when we work hard, brothers and sisters, not just in our spiritual lives, but when we work hard in the world even, in our daily responsibilities, when we work hard and when we do everything as if it is for the Lord, instead of having nothing like the sluggard and the sloth, we will have excess that we can give. We can have excess that we can share. We can be generous because we're living out of an overflow of a very generous God. So examine yourselves today, brothers and sisters. What should you be doing today that you've been putting off? Proverbs says, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Do not be a lazy bum. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this word today. You have challenged us to see where we have been lazy, where we have dropped the ball. And God, we do not want to be like the sluggard. We do not want to be like the sloth and live in idleness and live in um, laziness, Lord God, doing the work that we could do. God, because we want to reap a harvest 30, 60, 100 fold. We want to live fruitful lives, God. Lord Jesus, I pray that we will take heed to Solomon's Proverbs and his warnings. And I pray, God, that you will help us in our weakness, that you will make us strong. God, many of us are working hard. We are working long hours and we are tired. We are studying day in, day out, and we are exhausted, Father. But we ask for your supernatural strength, Lord, to lift us up and to continue uh, pursuing this, this race, Lord God, that we will be persistent and endure all things, that we will never um, crave idleness, that we will never rest ex- excessively, God, but that we will continue to be zealous and eager to do good works. And may you receive all the glory for what we do in our lives. We thank you, God, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. For intercessory prayer this week, let's continue to pray for our uh, pastors and leaders at Hope Church and in our neighboring churches in our community. Um, Let's continue to pray for uh, those in our church who are battling breast cancer, Janice and Claire's mom, Noah's mother, and let's also continue to pray for um, these upcoming elections, not just our presidential elections, but all the other um, votes that we have to do, that we will be wise and that we will um, pray for our country to um, accept and to really just heed um, your wisdom uh, or God's wisdom rather. Um, So yes, lots to pray about. 
announcements. We just have a Zoom prayer meeting um, Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Also, please collect your offering. And if your parents have been going to church, um, you could send your offering with them or you could drop it off yourself to church. Or you could also, we're also figuring out a way where we could do online giving. Um, so that's it. I hope you guys all have a wonderful week. Bye.